Hi guys, welcome to another episode of All About The Bass where I have for the first time picked up a bass guitar and tried to jam with Nathan here. So anyway, I'm the captain. And I'm Nathan. Uh, and yes, we thought we'd jump back in history 60 odd years and uh, grab a couple of um, copies, I guess, of Gibson's early forays into the world of electric bass. Uh, so we've got the, the classic, these are Epiphone guitars, so very, very affordable with the EBO and Nathan has the EB3. Uh, so quick potted history of these is, is um, and thank you Wikipedia for this, <laughs> your excellent information on this. Uh, it sounds like Probably Gibson, wrong then. Yeah, it sounded like Gibson introduced the first of their sort of EB basses in the late 50s, uh, with, with actually the, the first EBO was a, was a Les Paul inspired bass, so they took like a, a, flat, a slab top sort of um, Les Paul Junior kind of vibe uh, and made a, you know, a pretty short scale bass. This is a 30 and a half inch um, scale length. Um, and then, as you guys may or may not know, the, the, the Les Paul was actually discontinued from the, the Gibson catalogue in 61 uh, um, and replaced with the SG. Uh, and so the, 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 the EB bass, the EBO bass kind of transformed, you know, had its body shape changed into what we, became, what we sort of really know and love as the EB bass style with the SG style bass. And then round about that time, a year or two later, uh, I guess a kind of a more conventional uh, scale length bass came out uh, called the EB3, which has the 34 inch scale length. So like a jazz bass kind of Fender scale length with an extra pickup and a couple of other sort of, you know, funky switching things on there. Um, and Epiphone have for many, many, many years now sort of recreated sort of super affordable versions. Um, your EB3 is a slightly more authentic copy than the EBO because the Epiphone EBO is trying to sort of build more to a price point, so it's a bolt-on neck guitar. Oh, okay, right. This one's, yours, this one's glued. Yeah, yours is your set neck. But they're both solid mahogany bodies, mahogany necks, um, beautiful shiny red, you know, kind of not much to dislike about this. Similar but not identical, or is it identical bridge? No, it is an identical bridge, isn't it, by the looks of things? Yeah, it's kind of a three-point mount on there. Yeah, it's a it's a it's never a unique looking that. bridge. I've never seen anything other than on on the EB basses. Uh, you can adjust the intonation and stuff. So I mean, it's you know perfectly usable uh, bridge. I guess I wonder if the fact that it's not you know so sort of firmly mounted to the to the body probably gives it its own kind of tone. Hmm. Humbucker pickup on here, and you've got a humbucker and a mini humbucker on here. Yeah. Uh, so look, let's get some let's get some basic tones. Um, the short scale vibe is going to make it attractive to students, uh, younger students, because of course, you, you know, you, you can imagine you've got a, nearly a four inch difference here. So it makes a big, you know, it doesn't feel like much, but it's going to make a big difference to how you play this, you know, based on, you know, just where, you're, where your left hand's going to be. So lots of students like this, but also the short scale thing changes the tone. So because you're, if I'm tuning to the same pitch that Nathan's at, there's a lot less tension in my strings than there are on Nathan's. And so they've got a sort of a, some people call it like a hoopier sound, but it's like a more flappy kind of sound. Anyway, let's say. I've got a tone control. That's it really, you know, I mean, my volume control obviously. The most obvious way of changing the sort of the sound of, of, of this is, is where you would play it. So, you know, if you use the pickup as a thumb rest, you're gonna get a very warm. Whereas if you perhaps were to play down here, much brighter tone. And of course you play with a pick.
you'll get some different tones again. Let's move on to, to your bass, go through the tones. We're using pretty similar amps here, so hopefully the amps aren't making a, a big difference to our tones. Shouldn't but, do, plus they're DI'd, so the cabs aren't making any difference. Um, okay, yeah, well on this one, obviously you've got the two pickups as opposed to the one on yours, so you've got more tonal variations, more top end uh, primarily. And they give you a volume for each pickup. So it's, it's almost like an SG kind of wiring really, isn't it? You know. okay. Up. Front pickup, lots of output on the front, and the same sort of tone as yours. You know, quite a woolly. And then the back pickup, obviously a lot more. Uh... Yeah, more, more like a jazz bass kind of sound. Isn't Absolutely, it, really? yeah. Yeah, because it's a smaller pickup and it's nearer mm. the bridge. Uh, and then both together gives you quite a nice fat sound. And also, uh, on this one that you've got a, a three-way switch, which, as far as I can make out, is a pickup selector, right? It is. Just it's you know obviously if you have a jazz bass uh, or lots of two pickup bass guitars don't have a switch like an electric guitar would have they just require you to you know turn volumes up no. and down or have a balance control I, some... I, I have a feeling uh, but, you know just having a look at the, uh, the website a little while ago I think the original one had like a four-way switch that actually had some tonal capacitors and stuff right that, that actually, and I think what they've done so just like to a make this look, sort of circuit and yeah. I think to make this bass look authentic yeah. I've just stuck this on as a pickup selector because really, if you've got volumes for yeah. each pickup, you don't really need a no, pickup sure. selector. Well, like, as well. Do you know what you say that? As a guitar player, yeah. you know, on who owns a Les Paul, I would find it infinitely easier to just change the pickup selection on it than go, oh, hang on, quick roll down one volume and turn up another. So I think if I owned this bass, I probably right. would use the pickup switch more than the. I'd just leave the volumes where I wanted them and then just use the pickup switch. So whether it's authentic or not, it's certainly, I think, useful. There you go. Um, but just give us a quick demo then of, I know you've kind of done through the tones, but just show, so that's the neck pickup. Yeah. And, then... and the back. And both together. Oops. Yeah, <laughs> the wrong notes are for free included. That's um, jazz, folks. Jazz. Um, so, you know, really, it's it's they're kind of a, a funky guitar. Money-wise, um, they're both, I think, in that sort of two to three hundred pound sort of mark. No, even less. Sorry, one seventy-nine. That's super. Affordable. Really, one seventy-nine and two seventy-nine, two sixty-nine. Wow, two sixty-nine, crazy. Well, that, um, that is really for a for a set neck. Place. That's, a, that's yeah, pretty good value. Yeah, really, right? super affordable. I, I don't really know why the EB bass never kind of took off in the way that, say, the jazz bass or the P bass sort of took off. I mean, it had some had some cool, you know, early adopters. You know, you're sort of, Jack Bruce has got to be the most famous one, hasn't he? But, you I, know, I think so, Bill yeah. Wyman, John Entwistle. Yeah. Um, but it's always been... It's never been rather like you like it like it that had the prominence of a jazz bass or a P bass or or even some of the more modern equivalents you know stingrays and and uh, you know Ibanez basses and stuff. It's, it's always been kind of like a slightly quirky looking bass, hasn't it? Well, yeah. you, or, but I think it's cool. I don't. I don't I'm, I'm sort of struggling really to sort of go. I can't even give you a reason why it didn't become mainstream because it was around at the right time. Yeah. You know, it was around at, as one of the first basses. Sure. Um, I don't know. Maybe they were they more expensive or something in those days than uh, I don't the Defender. If it had a bolt on neck, maybe it was a possibly lot cheaper. could be mass could produced. Be, maybe the maybe the, the set neck thing isn't um, you know wasn't as stable as the bolt on kind of neck uh, for the touring guys. I don't really know. I kind of think when you hear Jack B Bruce play, the the tone is so synonymous with this. You know, he could that is you know that big fat humbucking pickup. Mm. That is the sound of that kind of era or yeah. of that type of band, you know, the, the music, the, the bass lines he used to churn out for, for Cream. So mm. I like it. Um, I mean, again, we, we, uh, uh, is there anything worse than a bass solo other than two bass players solo <laughs> at, at the same time, a bass duet? Um, but we, we were trying to sort of do some stuff together 
And and again, I always hats off to bass players. It's way. It's, I think many guitar players just go, well, it's two less strings, therefore it must be two. It must be easier, but it's not. It's definitely harder to play than the guitar. Um, so there we go. Look, I mean that that's the that's the Epiphone EB series. Look, really, you know, when you take the price into account, it, it's it's pretty impossible to to be too critical of these, really, isn't it? Well, absolutely. You know, this is two six nine. My word. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And it looks very cool too. Why don't you have a play on this one? Okay. Uh, just purely and simply because I think. Uh, or did, did we do a proper? Are you happy that we've done a sort of a proper run through of the, the, the oh, sort of yeah, tones? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I went through all the stuff on that one. That's cool. Because I think because I'm I'm interested for people to hear how the short scale thing affects the tone. Okay. And, and also your opinion on how it affects how it is to play. Obviously, the, the first thing that springs to mind is, you know, because it only has the humbucker pickup, mm. it is, you know, it's a lot more limited tonally than that bass is. Yeah. You know, so I would always, you know, I want to go for that. Yeah. Just because of the options that it gives you. You know, this is really a kind of one sound bass. And if that's what the sound you're after, great, you know, then, then that's, yeah. that's cool. Um, also, like you say, I guess for students, yeah, um, it's... It looks like you're holding an electric guitar. You know, it looks your natural position of what you know down at the sort of the first and second yeah, fret yeah, yeah. doesn't. You know, it feels more comfortable to me to just have the shorter scale neck. Well, it's um, very comfortable, and um, you know, it's it's a nice slim neck. Mm. Uh, like you say, you don't have to reach down so far. And what was the price on this one? One seven nine. Yeah, one seven nine. That's not a lot of money. Uh, yeah, if you are a student, mm. you know, and you want something, uh, you know, half decent quality, then that's great. Yeah, why not have a look at this? that uh, Jack Bruce would be proud of. Do you, oh. want, do, you want, do you want this one back? Yeah, you but I can do if you want. Go on, you have that one back. Because I actually, again, not that I'm a student or anything, I sort of am a bass really, but I prefer this one. Okay, I'll speed it up, I'll speed it up. Oh. Okay. Two, three, go. There we go. Well done for uh, bearing with me there whilst I sort of butchered my way through uh, the bass line from an me too. epic cream <laughs> tune. Uh, but there you go, look, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to find out more about these. Uh, they're a lot of fun, highly affordable. As I said, kind of often overlooked, um, but yes, it's cool. I'm into it. I'm into it, man. They're very authentic, very nice. Yeah, they're cool. So, so there we... you go. I've been the captain. I've been Nathan. We shall see you next time on All About the Bass. Bye now.